بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم لا حول ولا قوة الا بالله العلی العظیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و صلی الله علی سیدنا و نبینا ابی القاسم المصطفى محمد و آله الطیبین الطاهرین لا سیما بقیت الله فی الارضین اجل الله تعالی فرجه الشریف اللهم اخرجنی من ظلمات الوهم و اکرمنی به نور الفهم اللهم افتح علینا ابواب رحمتک و انشر علینا خزان علومک برحمتک یا ارحم الراحم الحمدلله وی هف توفیق تو استارت این نیو سیریز از یو نو on Fridays for several months uh, we had uh, sessions on Islamic lifestyle based on Mafatih al-Hayat by Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli. This was to continue uh, the p- first part which had uh, started months of Ramadan 2019. So Alhamdulillah uh, the book finished. Now after lots of thinking and consultation I thought uh, it could be inshallah a good continuity to uh, start with a section of Jamu Sa'adat and Mi'raj Sa'ada on Asrar wa Adab the Salah on some secrets and uh, spiritual manners for Salat inshallah Maybe after this finishes, we continue with these books and maybe we can decide another way. So this is a kind of uh, test also for us to see uh, how much we are going to benefit from these two great books. Before I go into the subject, I should introduce to you these two great books and their authors. Jami'u Sa'adat is a book in Arabic on akhlaq. If you want to translate the title literally, Jami' means something that brings together and collects and Sa'adat means happiness but in plural form so perhaps he meant happiness in every aspect or happiness of dunya and akhira this book is by the late Mullah Mahdi Naraqi the father Mulla Mahdi Naraqi. We have another book, Mi'raj al by Mulla Ahmad Naraqi, the son. So the father compiled Jami' al Sa'adat, and that was in Arabic. The son compiled Mi'raj al Sa'adah, and that is in Farsi. And inshallah, we are going to refer to do these two books because they are very much related to each other, as I am going to explain, inshallah. If you ask any Shia scholar, any person who knows our heritage, that please introduce to me few great books on akhlaq definitely they would include jam or saadat and miraj or saad so if you ask them to you know introduce 10 books they will include if you ask them to give you five books they mention it if you ask them to give you three books i am sure at least one of the two or maybe two of them are mentioned by consensus. Another great book is 
محجة البيضاء المحجة البيضاء في تحذيب الإحياء باي ملا محسن فيز كاشاني which is based on إحياء علوم الدين الغزالي he made some amendments and additions and changes uh, that is also a great book but certainly جامع السعادات and معراج السعادة are also included the late Ayatollah Bahjat, Rahmatullah Alai, who was a champion of you know this field, he said, and actually the clip is also there that he said to those who want to study ethics or Islamic science of akhlaq, to start with Mi'raj al and then carry on with Jam al Saadat and then carry on with Al Mahajatul Bayba. Also he replied to someone who asked for advice that every day study and reflect half a page of Mi'raj al Saada and then inshallah you will achieve so these are two great books that have really enriched our library so mulla ahmad naraqi and mulla mahdi naraqi which sometimes they call them naraqiyan they are both from naraq naraq is a place near city of Kashan. Now it's a small maybe city. And it's about maybe uh, 60 kilometers, something like this, to Kashan. This city has had, you know, famous figures, but these two great alum are maybe among the top scholars who have come from this place and then because of them Hose Elmiye of Kashan was developed and attracted many students from different places if we want to give some details about the life of the father so it is said that from the age of 15 he was studying you know islamic sciences and he studied great part of his studies in the city of Isfahan and he was teacher of Mullah Ismail Khajui Khaju is a district in Isfahan, Mahalle Khaju is still today. It's very famous. So this Mullah Ismail Khajui was his teacher. And he made most of his studies with this teacher. But he also benefited in Isfahan from Sheikh Muhammad ibn Hakim Haj Zaman and Sheikh Muhammad Harandi, who both were teaching philosophy. Both Naraghiyan, the father and the son, were great mujtahid, faqih, usuli, and also great philosopher, as well as other sciences. Inshallah, we will talk about it. Then he went to Karbala and Najaf. He lived with poverty, like many of our ulama at that time but he was very determined in continuing his study and his great teacher in Iraq was Agha Wahid Bihbahani. Altogether, he had seven great teachers and his son, when he talks about teachers of his father, he calls them Kawa Kebe Sabah, means seven stars. These are seven teachers of his father after finishing his study in Karbala he went to Kashan and settled in Kashan and established the Hose Elmiya of Kashan 
He was zufonun, means a person who was expert in different disciplines. Fiqh, usul, even mathematics, geometry, astronomy, philosophy. Later, he went in the year 1209 Hijri to Iraq for Ziyara and he passed away there and was buried there. He has many books on different subjects, but Jam o Saadat, which is the book that we are going to inshallah study, is dealing with one branch of practical wisdom. You know, they used to divide sciences into Al Hikmatul Nadariya Wal Hikmatul Amaliya. Al Hikmatul Amaliya or practical wisdom had three branches. One branch was akhlaq, one was siyasat, one was tadbir mudun. Siyasat manzil, tadbir mudun, and akhlaq, three branches. About policy, uh, politics, about house economy, and about ethics. So this is focused on ethics. And he says that I want to study the science of ethics and self-purification. It has three major sections. The first section is about some introductory discussions, including the immateriality of the soul or the impact of nature and human uh, physics on our akhlaq. Is there any connection between body and what happens in body on akhlaq? then about the role of tarbiya in akhlaq and then about the high position of the science of akhlaq because of its subject matter and because of its end and then about the reality of human beings and about the fact that our end should be to resemble Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is all section one. Section two is about four major virtues. Justice, wisdom, chastity, and bravery. These four are very important for any person who uh, looks at human faculties of rationality and appetite and anger and things about their balance. Uh, we have discussed this in some you know, courses about philosophical approach to ethics. So wisdom, bravery, chastity, and justice, these four are four major fundamental virtues that he talks about. He talks about the need for taking care of our own self-purification before we want to help other people about love about balance and the middle position in akhlaq the third section is about those traits of character which are good and we should acquire there is an introduction here and four chapters here and it's about how to reach the balance to strike a balance how to avoid extremes and then he talks about virtues about a speech virtues in action about treatment of moral disease and the four parts are about the faculty which is responsible for reasoning which is the faculty responsible for anger which is responsible for our appetites, what are their vices and virtues, and finally about those virtues and vices which are not from one faculty. Two or three faculties may come together and develop a virtue or a vice. So it's a, a combination. Mullah Mahdi Naragi in Jam al Saadat has used uh, 
Quran, Hadith, but also has referred to the works of philosophers, even Greek philosophers, even people before Socrates. He, when needed, refers to them as well. Like people like, for example, Pythagoras, he refers to them. But in the Islamic world, he very much refers to Abu Ali Muskawai in his book Tahdeeb al Akhlaq, also Akhlaq al Nasiri by Khaja Nasir al Din Tusi, and he has great respect for you know these two great books on Akhlaq. One thing that we have to remember is Jamu Saadat is very detailed and very expanded. It is in three volumes. There was a new edition done in Iraq in the time of the late Kalantar and Sheikh Muhammad Raza Muzaffar has an introduction to that edition. It's three volumes. It's translated also into Farsi. Unfortunately, very brief summary only is available in English. Maybe it's even less than 5%. Uh, some parts, I think, we have translated, you know, our brothers, uh, you know, we asked them to translate in, we publish in a spiritual quest, but for the most part, it's not available in English. It has been many times printed in Iraq, in Lebanon, in Iran, etc. But because it's very detailed and also it was in Arabic, so there was a need for something in Persian. And it is interesting that Fath Ali Shah, the Qajar king, because Qajar kings and Safavid kings, with all the things that each king you know, can be different, the dynasties can be different, but they had some religious background and they had some of great, sometimes, you know, teachers and murabbi when they were, ch you know, ch child, you not know, children. And they had some religious uh, understanding. Uh, sometimes, you know, for example, there are poems by them, there are points by them. I'm not saying that they were good or just all the time, but at least compared to some of the other kings, they had some religious tendency. People may say this was to show off, but it seems not. And even some of our ulama have said that, for example, uh, Safavid kings had, have helped a lot Islam, the school of Ahlul Bayt. Anyway, Fath Ali Shah, the king, asked Mullah Ahmad al-Naraqi, the son that I will talk about him, Please summarize the book of your father and make it into Persian so that people of Iran can benefit. It would not be only for Arabic speaking people, Arabic speaking people, or for ulama. So, Mullah Ahmad al Naraqi, who was himself a great scholar, as I will mention, inshallah, he summarized Jami al Saadat and uh, tried also to make it more understandable for the public so he removed some of the very deep philosophical you know uh, scientific discussions added some poems and there are some also points which are different but mostly it's a summarized version of Jama Saadat in Farsi now who is Mullah Ahmad al Naraqi, the son. And it is interesting how both father and the son became great uh, scholars. He was born in the year 1185, Hejri Qamari, in the city of Kashan, which, as I said, is about 60 70 kilometers away from Kashan. And he studied Muqaddamat and Sutuh, the first two levels of Hose with his father. And he was so genius that uh, soon he started also teaching Mutawwal and Ma'alim, which are on rhetorics and usul. 
And when he was just 20, in 1205, he went with his father to Iraq. He attended lectures of Agha Wahid Bahbahani, who was a great teacher and the one who managed to defeat Akhbaris. And after the demise of Agha Wahid Bahbahani, he attended lectures by Mirza Muhammad Mehdi Shahrastani and also Sahib Riyaz, which is one of our great ulama who is known because of his book. Sahib Riyaz is uh, Sayyid Ali Tabatabai, but known as Sahib Riyaz, means the author of Riyaz. And in Najaf, he also, this was in Karbala, in Najaf, he studied with Sayyid Mahdi Bahrul Ulum and Sheikh Ja'far Kaushif Al Ghita, some of great scholars. When he was very young, he became Mujtahid. And like his father, he was Zufunun. He was expert in different sciences, fiqh, usul, philosophy, etc. And it is interesting that he also very much was uh, following the footsteps of his father. For example, if his father has some book on akhlaq, he has a book continuing the work of his father and supporting that. If he has uh, something, for example, his father has something on fiqh, he has something similar. If he has, you know, poem, he has something similar. So he was very much continuing the heritage of his father and trying to promote uh, that and uh, build upon it. In the year 1209 that the father passed away, uh, he went to Kashan so that he would lead the Hose el and do, you know, all the, you know, community work that his father was doing. And then in 1245, because of, uh, you know, epidemic disease, then he passed away and they moved his body to Najaf and is buried in the shrine of Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam. Now let me quote for you before we start few sayings of our ulama about them. Shaykh Abbas Qummi rahmatullah alayhi he has a book on biographies of ulama. He says that Mulla Ahmad Farzand Mulla Mahdi Naraqi Alim Abid Faqih Sha'ir Adib So he says he was Alim but also Abid a person who was doing lots of Ibad but not just acts of Ibad that means he was really dedicated and Faqih, Sha'ir, he was a poet, Adib, he was expert in literature, Siraj Wahaj, he was an illuminating light, Bahr Daryay Khurushan, he was a, an ocean of knowledge, Fahlul Fuhul, Wa Iftikhar Ahl Manqul Wa Ma'qul, he was the pride of people who were expert in ma'qul in intellectual sciences or manqul in uh, transmitted sciences like fiqh and uh, hadith alim rabbani and then he says haman kasi ke sazawar ast ke dar mourid ishan gufte shavad ke ustad sheikh ansari budand this is the person that we can tell he was teacher of Sheikh Ansari. Whoever knows Sheikh Ansari, then would understand that even saying someone was, you know, a good student of Sheikh Ansari is a great credit. But Mullah Ahmad Naragi was teacher of Sheikh Ansari. So this is what 
شیخ عباس قمی صاحب مفاتی این هیز بوک فواید و رزوی یسیز ملا حبیب الله کاشانی این لباب الالقاب هی سیز فازل حاج احمد نراقی فرزند محقق نراقی so he says this great scholar was the son of great scholar uh, and like his father he was one of the famous scholars of Islam and one of the greatest fuqaha but after that he says balke he is not pleased to say he was a great faqih he says balke a'lam afqah افضل و اتقن آنها در عصر خودش و مشهورترین آنها در زمان خود بود It's not enough to say he was a great scholar Instead, he was the most knowledgeable the greatest jurist, the most privileged and the one who had the firmest understanding in his time and at the same time the most established and the most famous one in his time Ayatollah Hassan Zadi Amuli also, he, when he talks about uh, the late Naraqi, he says, Nabighe Dahr wa Jami Kulliye Funun Ulum. He says he was genius of time and he had all the disciplines of his time. Da'iratul Ma'arif Natiq. He was a speaking encyclopedia. And then he says, once I was with Allah Tabatabai and the father and son, Naraghiyan, were mentioned. Allah Tabatabai said, according to Atullah Hassan Zad Amuli, that both father and son are great scholars, great ulama, but na shenacht and they are unknown, unfortunately. The late Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Kazim Tabatabai Yazdi, Sahib Urvatul Wusqa. Urva is very famous book in fiqh. So Sahibul Urva, it is said that one of his great books of fiqh was Mustanad al-Shia by Mullah Ahmad al-Naraqi. So it is said that he had three books on fiqh very dear to him. One was Mustanad al-Shiyya by Mullah Ahmad al-Naraqi, the author of Mi'raj al-Sa'ad. So we are dealing with such exceptional uh, scholars and such exceptional books. So I hope, inshallah, uh, our series would be blessed uh, because we are trying to show appreciation to these great scholars we are also try to understand based on their teachings and advice how we can improve our salat so inshallah it would be bismillah a blessed course the exact also uh, word of ayatollah bahjat uh, is he said ruzane nisf safhe از کتاب شریف معراج و سعاده را بخوانید و بدان عمل کنید Every day read half page of معراج و سعاده and act upon it So trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we start with the first uh, part of this section on Salat, about the manners, spiritual manners and secrets of Salat. Uh, I will read a uh, few lines from Jama'u Sa'adat in Arabic. And Mi'raj al-Sa'adah has similar things but uh, uh, shorter and in Farsi. So if uh, in these sessions there is anything new or additional in Mi'raj al-Sa'adah, I will try to mention, but I will follow Jama al-Sa'adat, which is uh, the main uh, text. 
So, in Jamu Sa'adat, volume 3, page 321, and Alhamdulillah it's online and also uh, it will be put on uh, Zoom, inshallah, it's already there, so you can see it also on Zoom. Uh, those who are on Facebook, uh, so uh, you can find it also online. Uh, for example, on uh, Ishia, if you put Jamu Saadat, uh, you can find it. Yeah. Maybe for the next session, inshallah, we we'll try to put the link on Facebook as well, inshallah. So, in this uh, section, he talks about Salat. He says, "Eilam anna salata ma'junun samawi wa tarkibun ilahi." Very beautiful. He says, "Salat is a combination which is heavenly." Ma'jun. You know, sometimes we have a ma'jun in dunya. We mix things. Uh, uh, sometimes you know for example uh, if you go to Iran you know in Mashhad for example you know they have ma'jun they put some you know honey and herbs and nuts and pistachio you know it's very good for example or in some places you know you can have in uh, with juice for example they call it ma'jun because uh, few things are combined and they are very made you know very powerful but here we are not dealing with something uh, from this dunya from this world salat is designed by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he has used for making this salat things that he recommended and he designed like takbir, ruku, sujood, qiyam, tashahud, salam. So the ingredients are made by him and then he has put them together. The design is also by him. Ma'junun, samawiyun, wa tarkibun ilahiyun. It's a divine combination. Just remembering this by itself is a great, uh, you know, way to understand significance of Salat. That Salat is not something ordinary. Salat is something that Allah has designed and put together. Rukkibat min ajza'in kathiratin mukhtalifah. Salat, as you know, you are all familiar, Salat has different parts. We have Wajibat and Mustahabbat, obligatory parts and recommended parts. Among obligatory parts, we have Arkan and we have Qayr Arkan. Some of the obligatory ones are pillars. So if you miss them, even unintentionally there is problem but those which are obligatory but not arkan if unintentionally you miss them salat can still be valid maybe there is something you have to do but salat can be still valid in any way we have parts which are obligatory parts which are recommended but there is also the esprit of salat which is very important so he says Rukkibat min ajza'in kathiratin mukhtalifah It's put together by combining different parts but these parts mutafawitatin fil fadli wal ihtimam biha They are different in their importance and the significance that they have فَبَعْضُهَا بِمَنْزِلَةِ الرُّوحِ 
و بعضها به مسابت اعضائر رئیسیه و بعضها به منزلت سائر الاعضاء Imagine a human being. A human being has soul and body. And body has different parts. Some parts of the body are very fundamental without which you cannot survive. Like brain, like heart. Some parts are very important but without them you can still survive. Like hand for example. If God forbid someone loses hand it still can survive. But not without brain, not without heart. And then we have spirit, which has different relation. No body can survive without the spirit, without the soul, even if all the organs are intact. So he says, some parts of salat, like niya, like khulus, khudur al-qalb, presence of heart, sincerity, these are like spirit. و بعضها به مثابت الاعضاء الرئیسه Some are like uh, fundamental uh, parts و بعضها به منزلت سائر الاعضاء and some are like other parts, other organs Then he explains this He says a human being is a reality which is compound of different parts but لا يكون إنسانا موجودا كاملا إلا بمعنى باطن هو الروح. This is very important for all our discussion in future because unfortunately even people who are religious they pay most of their attention to just make the body of Salat, the physics of Salat, okay. Not the spirit of Salat. Therefore, he tries to clarify this at the beginning. He says, a human being cannot exist as a perfect human being unless there is something hidden, which is Ruh, which is spirit. And something which is obvious, which are these parts. Some parts are internal parts, some are external parts. For example, you can see hand, you can see leg, you can see nose, you can see eyes. But there are things like kidney, for example, you know, liver, you cannot see. And they are different in their significance. Some of them we can survive with, some of them we cannot survive with. Then... He says some of the parts are also important for our beauty. Like for example, eyebrow for example is good for our beauty, like hair for example. So he has a discussion here about different parts of the body. And then he says after a few lines, وَكَذَلِكَ الصَّلَاةُ حَقِيقَةٌ مُرَكَّبَةٌ Salat is also a compound reality. It's a form which is formed by shar, by religion. Allah through religion has explained to us. And has asked us to be dedicated by learning this. This is the most important. What is the spirit of Salat? What is the thing that we have to give? Maximum attention and niya, wal qurba, wa hudur al qalb, wal ikhlas. Of course, these are not four separate things. These are four terms that we are familiar with, and you know they overlap. Intention, qurba, nearness, which has to be our intention. Huzur al-qal, presence of heart, ikhlas, sincerity. These are terms that you are familiar with and you have to have full attention and sincere intention so that your salat has ruh, full attention and sincere intention gives ruh to our salat and of course the more ma'rifah that we have and the more love that we have make this salat grow. So with 
full attention and sincere intention, you have ruh, but can be like a child. With knowledge and with love, this child grows. But there are parts. Takbiratul Ihram is a rokn. Roku is rokn. Sujood, Qiyam, these are important parts, these are fundamental parts. Tafutu bifafat hassalat. If these ruku, sujood, takbiratul ihram, liyam, which are arkan, if they are not there, salat cannot exist. Like heart, like brain. But heart, at the same time, which is fundamental, is not like spirit. You should not think heart is like a spirit. Heart can be there, but without a spirit, we cannot live. And then he mentions other wajibat, like Fatiha, Surah, Zikr for Ruku, Zikr in Sajdatain, and etc. After that, he talks about Mustahabbat, like Qunut, Dua for the beginning before Takbiratul Ihram, you know, you can make dua. Takbirat other than Takbiratul Ihram, for example, when you want to go to Ruku, you want to raise from Ruku, there is Takbir, there is Ta'awud, you know, Audhu Billah Mina Shaitan al Rajim, for example, before Ham. So these are the Mustahabbat that are recommended, but even without them, still Salat can be okay and just your reward or the perfection kamal goes down it's tamam it's complete but not perfect then after this introductory points he says now listen to this analogy and he's very uh, you know in a very friendly manner he says, إِذَا عَرَفْتَ ذَلِكْ فَعْلَمْ يَا حَبِيبِي He says, if this has been known to you, so please be aware, my Habib, my friend, my dear one. Uh, his son in Mi'raj al-Sa'ada says, چون این را دانستی پس ای جان برادر so he says, John Baradar, it's very nice. It means, my dear brother. Here he says, Ya Habibi. So, Inna salataka qurbatun wa tuhfatun tataqarrabu biha ila hadrate malak al-muluk. He says, your salat is a gift that you are offering to the king of the kings. No, when someone gives a gift to the king, the gift should be without problem. You cannot, for example, give a gift which is faulty, give a machine which doesn't work, give a, for example, horse that cannot move or is blind or is ill or is dead. No one gives a dead horse to the king or a blind horse. Or, for example, if you want to give a servant to the king, give someone who is healthy and fit and, you know, can help. So, he says, your salat is the gift that you are giving to the king of the kings because you want to get closer to him. Like people give, offer a gift to the king to get closer to the king. And this gift of you, which is your Salat, will come back to you on the Day of Judgment. So, you are offering this gift to Allah, you are presenting this to Allah. But when everything and everyone is present before God, your gift comes back. Now you can choose. What do you want to give to Allah as a gift that would come back to you 
on the Day of Judgment. Do you want to give something with beautiful form or with ugly form? Do you want to give something which is with life or without life? This is the whole difference between different types of Salat. Either Salat has complete form and in addition to complete form has life, has soul or not. He says it's like كَمَنْ أَحْدَى عَبْدًا سَحِيهًا سَوِيًّا شَابًا جَمِيلًا عَاقِلًا كَامِلًا إِلَى مَلَكًا مِنَ الْمُلُوكِ If you give your salat with all the wajibat and mustahabbat and ikhlas and huzur qalb is like giving a servant or a slave which is healthy, which is you know young, active, beautiful, intelligent, wise, experience to the king so king would be always appreciating because this can help him a lot or even if the king doesn't need this he can give it to someone else or at least king knows that you have offered the best you could maybe this king has millions of such people but you have to offer the best that you can but if you only do the actions which are zahira, only the you know um, apparent or the external actions of salat and you are heedless from presence of heart and sincerity and nearness seeking nearness to Allah kana kaman ahda abdan mayyatan bila ruh is like someone who gives a dead servant to a king because without huzur, without tawajjuh, without qurba, it's dead and if someone doesn't bring some of the wajibat is like kaman ahda abdan maqtulan is like someone that he has himself killed and then given. وَمَنْ اِقْتَسَرَ عَلَىٰ أَقَلِّ مَا يَجْزِي And if someone, يُجْزِي If someone does only wajibat, no mustahab, is like someone who gives a servant who is alive but is blind or is deaf or cannot speak or doesn't look nice or is injured. Then he says, فَتَنَبَّهْ أَيُّهَا الْغَافِلِ وَتَأَمَّلْ فِي أَنَّكَ إِذَا أَهْدَيْتَ تُحْفَةً إِلَى مَلِكٍ مِنْ مُلُوكِ الدُّنْيَا بَلْ إِلَى مَنْ دُونَهُ بِمَرَاتِبَ كَثِيرَةً مِنَ الْأُمَرَاءِ وَالْحُكَّامِ كَيْفَ تَجْتَهِدُ وَتَسْعَى فِي تَجْوِيدَهَا وَتَحْسِينَهَا لِيَقْبَلَهَا He says, O oh, the person who is in who is heedless think about this when you want to give the gift to a king or even not the king to a minister to a governor you try hard to make it nice present it in a good way choose something which is good so that that person may accept من تحسين حديتك وتوفتك إلى ملك الملوك. What is wrong with you, O oh, the one who is deceived, that you are heedless and you compromise when you want to give something to God, you compromise about making it good. Who is God? Who is the King of the Kings? الذي من هبدك وإليه عودك. This is the king that he created you and to him you are returning. And then he refers to what we have in our hadith as this concept that every salat that is not performed properly كل صلات لا يتم الانسان رقوعها والسجودها This is 
something that you can understand from hadith uh, the, you know, uh, it's a conclusion from hadith this salat would be your first enemy on the day of arz al-akbar when everything is presented to allah and salat says kama you wasted me like you know if you deliberately make someone disabled or kill someone that person on the day of judgment will complain the salat that we make and is disabled or is killed or is injured would complain and would say you have harmed me you have wasted me may god waste you so we have to be careful about the significance of our moment of salat this salat is not going to be you know forgotten is not going to disappear from the records this salat is like a child it's a living being that is going to remain after you like i don't know something that you have created and whether in the good form or bad form it's going to remain so now we have the chance to make ourselves ready for making a salat which is going to be in the full shape and with the soul so that on the day of judgment when this salat comes back we would be proud of it and this salat would pray for us not that would pray against us okay this was just introduction and inshallah the next uh, heading is Haqiqatu Salat what is the reality of Salat I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the soul of all our souls of all ulama especially these two great scholars that we are benefiting from them in this course the late Mullah Mahdi al Naraqi and the late Mullah Ahmad al Naraqi and we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us improve our Salat and have salat al khashi'in insha'Allah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Muhammad. Is there any question? Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. I hope you're well, inshallah. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. That, um, um, starting this um, amazing book. Um, so, one quick question I had. Um, this al al Thani, which you went through, um, you know, different examples and uh, parables of uh, a salah which is uh, not complete or is uh, defected, um, you know, compared to the body of the human being. You know, when it comes to, I know uh, there's going to be much, much more to discuss, but you know, just based on what, what we read, um, obviously, when it comes to the physical, you know, um, body appearance. If someone's blind or not, someone has a heart or not, etc. You are able to, you know, examine it. You are able to, you know, go to the hospital and, and see whether mm -hmm. these organs are there and they're functioning properly or not. But when it comes to salah, how do we know? Uh, yeah. you know what are some of the criteria that we know whether this salat is blind or whether it's missing the heart or missing, you know, the liver and um, examples are like that and you know what, what would you say i know it's, it's a very big topic but since we discussed yeah. what, what sort of guidelines would you very good question so thank you. Th thank you very much the question is is there any way to understand whether our salat is in a good form or not is it alive or not the answer is yes and there are different signs for Salat which is alive. One sign is the Salat which is alive and functions. Inna salata tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Salat prohibits doing bad things. 
if we have salat which is alive which has soul then it's impossible to make sins it's impossible it's impossible to be arrogant how can I say with attention and sincere intention and then I think I am myself you know independent from God doing things and become arrogant or I try to you know please people by displeasing Allah if Salat is functioning all our life is in good order and shape when we say salat is khayrul amal in my humble understanding is not that it is an action and compared to other actions this is the best no this is the action which summarizes everything else or has everything else under its control like for example you say commander is the best soldier okay but commander alone no if you have a good commander means you have a good army under this commander good soldiers good surgeons etc so Salat, if it has life, then you would not go for mohkar, you would not become arrogant, you would not, you know, do zulm, you would have tranquility. It's a device actually by which we can always, you know, check ourselves. If you want to, you know, like for example, for body, you know, we have blood test for example for a spirituality our blood test is to test our salat of course sometimes maybe some people because of you know their physical psychological you know uh, condition maybe they find it difficult to have tranquility I'm not saying it's all working the same for people but at least the minimum is the respect that you show for Salat is a test how much respect you show to Salat the minimum is this if you cannot feel very much different when you are praying at least how much attachment how much uh, significance you attach to Salat uh, there is a question also on Facebook about how to increase our Huzur in Salat which is a very good question inshallah I think if you can bear uh, with me we can inshallah discuss these things with your du'as inshallah okay thank you very much and please remember us your du'as and inshallah look forward to connecting to you next week we in this uh, day of Juma we end but please recite Fatiha for all marhumin especially those who have rights upon us are for parents teachers ulama martyrs and the souls of these great two scholars. Fi Amanullah. Thank you very much.